this is December 9, 2014, and the precious metals are having a big up day right now. Silver is up 73 cents, gold's up about 28 bucks. Um, these are good moves. However, $17 silver still isn't something that would have excited someone a few years ago. I mean, given that it was like 15, now it's like 17, that's exciting for this time frame. But for the 2011 time frame, that's not exciting. So I'm going to talk about the, the, the Dow to gold ratio, like the, 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 the Dow Jones Industrial Stock Index and the price of gold. Because a lot of times people say, compare real things to real things. Or in this case, real things to stock market things. Essentially, you'll hear on a lot of these pundits say, don't price things in fiat dollars. So, okay, that's an extremely fair statement. I totally agree. When you're looking at the price of something, compare assets to other assets. And one way to do this is like the Dow Jones ratio to the gold ratio. Now the gold and silver ratio, as we can see, is about 72 right now. So that's a lot higher now than it has been a few years ago. But before that, it was even higher. And I have a point I want to interject here before I go on. So you'll hear some arguments about things, or, or you'll, you'll hear some talking points that, that, don't, that kind of fail the logic test. One of them is, I heard recently, to be in a bubble, people have to own it. Talk to your neighbors. If they don't own it, then it is not in a bubble. I think that's a very fallacious, as in false, statement. Here's why. Talk to your neighbors. How many of your neighbors own Bitcoin? None. Oh, so that means Bitcoin's not in a bubble, right? When Bitcoin was worth more than an ounce of gold, when Bitcoin was like 1300 bucks for a Bitcoin, talk to your neighbors. Wow, my neighbors didn't own Bitcoin using this logic. Therefore, it's not in a bubble because people have to own it to be in a bubble, right? So if you had used that logic and bought Bitcoins at 1300 right now, you wouldn't be very happy. So what I'm saying is that stuff can go up in price. You can do well buying stuff, but I would not use the argument to be in a bubble, people have to own it, as a reason to think about anything that you're buying. Because just look at the Bitcoin example, right? Except for a few people on YouTube, I don't know anybody in my real life who actually owned a Bitcoin. And look at the chart for Bitcoin. Look what happened to Bitcoin. I think we can safely say Bitcoin was in a bubble Yet, I didn't know anybody in real life who owned any. Okay, going back to the Dow to silver ratio, right? If you look at the chart for the long-term Dow to go ratio, there's all kind of charts over the internet. I'm going to get a chart right now, and I'm going to actually flip my screen so you can see it here. Look at, see, here's a chart. Here is the Dow to gold ratio for two, no, for about, yeah, for 100 years, we got 1910, and we got now. So that's the ratio, right? This is the ratio. Then and now. So looking at this chart, um, I would say that I couldn't really use this chart as a reason to buy or sell gold or reason to buy or sell stocks. It looks like it's kind of kind of in the middle of some that are meandering around. So Right now, the, the, the Dow to gold ratio is above 10. We've heard predictions that it will go, it will go one to one in the past. I mean, we, we've heard that a few years ago. It could do that. I mean, it could very well do that. I mean, you could have both going down, both going up, one going up and one going down. But looking at the past of this thing, right? Um, I'm not quite sure that that is a great metric to use. 
I mean, in 1980, it was like one, right? And on this chart, in 1932, it was about two. And here, I'll, I'll, I'll swing this chart around for you. Okay, swing this chart around for you, right? And it looks like the trend, the hundred year trend is up. Of course, that's the hundred year trend. And that trend can decrease. The thing about hundred year trends is that when they move, I mean, they're moving on like a yearly basis. So another thing I heard in a video very recently is the video said gold and silver are at like 500 year lows. Well, I mean, sorry, 5,000 year lows. Well, um, looking at my chart here, right? If we're gonna compare, uh, um, swing this back around here, folks. If we're gonna compare something you know, gold to the, the Dow Jones Industrial, right? I don't see if, you know, I don't see a, a low here, you know, we're, we're kind of right in here, you know, that, that, you know, up here, you know, down here, we're kind of in the middle of that channel. So, I mean, I'm not sure that statement is really relevant or even accurate. So it's kind of like when I hear that stuff, I really cringe. I really cringe because a few years ago, I gave a lot more credit to those statements than I do now. I mean, when you when someone says, hey, it can't be in a bubble because you don't know anybody who owns it, it's like, wow, that's true. I don't know anybody who owns it. I don't want it to, to be in a bubble, so it can't be in a bubble. No, no. It can and cannot be in bubbles for reasons, but that's not a reason I would use. So, yes, um, Silver's so having... Um, a good up day. And as I said before, it'd be great, great, if this stuff went up really high. That'd be really, really great. However, that doesn't mean that I'm going to start believing false statements. So thanks for watching and be well.